Isn't that kind of remember? Are we ready to call the meeting to order at 7.01 on uh, Wednesday, April 12th, 2023? Uh, okay, there's nobody here, therefore, but us chickens. Therefore, there is no public forum. Um, we will seek your agenda, but please ask if there are any additions to the agenda. Hearing none, may I have a, a motion to approve the agenda? So mm -hmm. Thank you, Geraldine. Seconder. Thank Laura. you, Laura. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Hearing none. Oops. Unanimous. I beg your pardon. I apologize. We did get a letter at the last minute that I meant to ask to add to the agenda. Oh, here it is. I need an amendment to the previous motion. We'll rescind that. Thank you very much. Motion. I, I move an amendment to the previous motion that we add the letter from Nancy Hack Chair. No, it's from Kim. Oh, from Kim Madeline, Minister. For our review of public works of the minister. Um, um, will the secondary agree? Yes. Thank you, Geraldine and Laura. That would be correspondence 7.2. Lord, help me try and find a place to put it inside the <laughs> stack of paper. Um, all right. We have an amended agenda. All those in favor, raise your hand. Opposed, carry. Thank you. Now, moving on to section five review and approval of the minutes of Wednesday, March the 8th, 2023. Are there any? Errors or omissions. Uh, I would like to point out uh, section six business arising. Uh, same pesky spelling error. Village stationery. Is it staying in one place now? Beg your pardon? Yes, it is. No jokes. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, on page five at the bottom, there's section nine, new other business. Just a pretty grammatical. Um, Commissioners Hatch stated that she and Commissioner Noss will be taking part in a webinar. So that should be just singular. singular. Um, page six. Um, under F. Cell phone clerk treasurer. I would, on the second paragraph, Chair Hatch asked if commissioners wanted cell phones as other municipalities provided for the members. When I read that, I thought, oh, well, Commissioner Hatch is very free with everybody's money saying, oh, who wants a cell phone? I listened to the video and I actually said, is it necessary for the commissioners to have a cell phone? 
and it was determined that it was not necessary. So I would like that correction reflected in the minutes, please. It doesn't leave the public with a very good impression. Those are my amendments, corrections to the minutes. Are there any others? May I have a motion, please, to approve the minutes and as amended? So moved. Thank you, Randy. Second. Second. Thank you, Geraldine. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? No. Moving on to the special minutes, uh, uh, Monday, April 3rd. Uh, special meeting minutes. Are there any corrections, errors, omissions? All right, my turn again. Uh, Nancy Hatch, Commission Chair, did, did attend in person, not by video. Uh, it was, well, which was the time you came in by it? February 21st. Um, anything else? May I have a motion, please, to approve those meeting, those minutes of the special meeting as amended? So moved. Thank you, Laura. Second. Second. Randy, thank you. All in favor? Aye. Uh, Gary. Business arising. Updating boardroom equipment status. Heather? Yes, thank you. Um, as you can see, we have uh, managed to procure new boardroom tables. Those cost approximately 800 for all five together. Uh, there is, I have a couple of recommendations on chair models from, from Uline that are very cost effective. Sorry, is that two different chairs? It's two different yeah. chairs. They're very similar, but they're both roughly only 150 a piece. So shipping is usually really expensive, isn't it? No, online, no, no. Actually, they don't. They don't charge. They're usually pretty fast. And uh, as I as I mentioned briefly before we got into the meeting this, uh, this evening, I am looking at a range of boundary microphones that will just kind of nest in the middle of the table. The ones I'm looking at range from one to two hundred dollars, so I'll check on those. But regardless, we're we're very much within the budget that that was set at the previous meeting. Thank you, Heather. You're welcome. The, um, I asked a question about. <laughs> yes, Gerald. Chair, I'd like to ask the staff person. You may speak to each other. Can yes. we have two of those microphones rather than one? I kind of would like. Oh, my goodness. I'm sorry about that. Is that you? <laughs> <laughs> I think one will probably do us. Uh, they're quite sensitive, so they're they're meant for larger boardrooms. I think we'll be okay with one. Okay. And if we're not, we can always order a second one. I don't want to buy more than don't want to get too ahead of it. I so we'll get the first one ordered and then we'll see how we do. I'm just feeling I feel a bit sensitive because I had so many people say that they couldn't hear us. So. Right. Well, hopefully, members of the public will have that sorted very soon. And yes, Randy. Uh, technology was supposed to be the primo thing on the list. What's happened there? That's the microphone is the main thing. Okay. And just setting up some of the <laughs> Zoom a little bit differently. Uh, we are looking at potentially getting another larger monitor for the gallery, um, if that's something we would be interested in. Uh, can you explain that in more words? Basically, <clears throat> excuse me. <laughs> Basically, we would um, it would be patched together with this so that whatever's on this screen would also be seen like a sec a second monitor. I see that's so the same the exactly. Like a jumbotron. Or yes. Something. Yeah. 
Yes. So, so I, I haven't I haven't landed on a model for that yet, but that's one of the other items. I'm your about. technology is uh, complete at the moment for what yeah. other than the microphone, or complete for the time being, anyway. I think with the microphone, you'll find things improve quite a bit. But just mm. rearranging the room was a little part of that to be able to get you all on camera uh, more nicely. And you're equipped to your satisfaction in your office now. So right? far, so good. Thank you. Laura, did you have a question? Did we not talk about something up on the wall at some point, or did I make that? I think we did. Uh, and I would suggest that before anything is purchased, that it come before the commission uh, for discussion and approval. The one on the wall, was that for the galleries? It, I believe the intention was something similar to this, yes. So uh, the shape of this room isn't ideal for that. Um, so you're kind of in a little better position uh, to have a large, if we wanted to make this monitor larger, we could easily do that. If there, they could be two of them back to back, one that faces you and one that faces the gallery. Um, it wouldn't need to be super big because of the shape of the room and how close people are, and you want them to be able to see you. Well, where I'm sitting, I'm mm -hmm. not on the camera. There you are. There you are. I'm right there. I can see you. Right there. We can see you. Okay, yeah. yeah. I'm, look, I'm looking at the screen here, and I can't see anything. At her, her laptop screen? Oh, that's what I'm looking at. Mm. <laughs> Okay. okay, so we'll I'll come back with a further update on that one in the next week. Thank you, Heather. Um, right. Moving on to section seven, seven point one correspondence just from the Chester Municipal Heritage Society. We have received um, information on how the money we granted them was spent. Are there any comments or questions? Yes, Geraldine. How much money did we grant them? I believe it was $5,000. Yeah. That's bad. correct. I think it would be handy to know that. Mm. Um, and we have 7.2. A letter, and we all have a copy from Kim Maslin. This is with regard to um, implementation of permit CM061 20 at the foot of Granite Street in the village of Chester. Why don't you read it? Let me know if you have any questions. Mm -hmm. That appears to be the answer. Um, Heather, will this be part form part of the minutes of this meeting? Correct. All right. So we will receive this as information. Thank you very much. And of course, the pleasure. Heather, over to you. Okay. Thank you, Madam Chair. I'll just uh, I have just a few items to, to review. Um, so mostly since my start date was four weeks ago, it's been the focus has been on onboarding. And I was very grateful to have uh, Jeff Conrad's assistance in the orientation. I've had a number of meetings with some of our uh, colleagues up at uh, MODC with um, Tara McGuire, the new CIO, and Olivia Corkin, an economic development. Uh, members of the Chester Business Association uh, met here and I was able to, to join them. And Andrea Hislop from Municipal Affairs and Housing. So it's been nice. A nice start in getting to know our, our colleagues. Uh, the pumper sale, we know the winning bid was from the Great Village Fire Department and permission of the Minister of Municipal Affairs was required. The process is underway and we hope to have permission granted this week. 
Lido Pool Capital Repairs, the village was successful in its grant application to Communities Culture and Heritage, thank you, Jeff, for $150,000 toward the repair project. An RFP process will be required with the intention of beginning the work after the summer swim season, um, pending availability of contractors. Yes, uh, does that grant require Matt's team fund for the motion? It doesn't require it in the um, in the letter, the terms of reference we got for the letter, but it does give them the project budget is about 325. So we, we will require that, that's a step we're going to take. That is correct. Okay. Thank you. Perhaps we could save the questions until Heather's finished the report. Rather than by the subject. I beg your pardon? Rather than by the subject. Yes. Okay. Hey, uh, 2023 annual public meeting. We have some proposed dates, as I'll refer in the financial report, that the audit will be beginning on um, October, October, April 28th. So now that we have that date, we are proposing that the annual public meeting be either Tuesday, May 30th or June 6th. Okay with the election to follow a week later, either the 6th or 13th. So I would uh, request direction from the commission about those dates. Um, I guess the, uh, the audit thing. Uh, Sorry, it's in the next report, but it's uh, it's April 28th that it begins. And I, had, I had asked him to just make sure that it was done by mid-May. He said that was achievable. Okay. Don't we have I'm sorry. Yes. Don't we have to have it on hand before the annual general or something? Is there yes. some we'll, requirement? We'll, we'll have it on hand and go find the vote for the Do you have do you have a suggestion on which of those dates works better with the uh, municipal calendar or anything like that? Or are they just open dates? They're pretty much open dates that, that we were considering based on the timing of last year. And what days are they? And and also you know, we yeah. should have a better idea of uh, Nancy's availability with her. Or a going to travel to Ontario. So you're okay with those dates, Nick? Either one of them? Um, I would suggest I would prefer the 10th. The 10th of June. June. For the meeting? Or sorry, for, sorry. I'm cross eyed here. Tuesday, June the 6th. Tuesday, June the 6th. Does anybody else have any preference? May I look at my camera? Absolutely. Yeah, I'm going to go. And did you finish that? Did you discuss that? was, I think, my last, <coughs> my last two items. So the annual public meeting, uh, the venue is to be determined. From what I can gather, it looks like you've moved it around in previous years. So is there a particular order, or is just whatever's available of some of the venues you've used in the past? I would suggest that you try um, the Legion first. OK. And the other option would be uh, St. Stephen's. You could get prices for each. That's Tuck Hall, is what they usually call St. Stephen. Yeah. Sounds very rough. No, sure. both, both, both canyons are nice. St. Stephen's, I find, is a little cleaner. Well, he married us. <laughs> oh, is that right? He was in East River. Yeah. Thanks, so that's great with that. And then the election would, um, and then the election would take place uh, a week later. Why can't so, we do them all at the same time? Chair, <laughs> why can't we do it at the same time? Do what at the same time? Have the bloody election at the same time as the annual meeting. Because our election bylaw calls for something else. You can't combine them? No. There's a reason for that. Yeah. You made the reason, please. You made the reason? Yes. 
The reason is that possibly you would have unqualified candidates for a commissioner, or you could have the meeting stacked with people who would be opposed to or in favor of something that is not that doesn't benefit the village itself. And that is why we have an election bylaw. Yeah, I don't have it right in front of me, but I could certainly get back to you with, with the rationale of the bylaw if that's helpful, Geraldine. Yeah, it just seems to me you could, you know, you could have weird people at both meetings. It's hard, it's hard to get people to meetings. It just seems sensible to combine the meetings. Having an election gives you an opportunity to have an advance poll on um, an election day. Um, it gives uh, a control, not a manipulative control, but a control over the process. Okay. And I'd like to say something, but Randy was first. Does the chair recognize me? Yes. All right. The, um, Basically, my concern with the timings uh, is, is if we go to an election, is there an advance poll? Yes, there is. Because I have, I will be going to Kedji on the 13th and the 14th, and if it goes into that, I'd like to be able to vote. Right. If, uh, if June 13th is the choice, which it would be if June 6th, the advance yeah. poll will be on the 10th. Can I Randy, are you? I yield sense? the floor. Thank you. Sure. Do we have to ask them to jump on stage? Yeah. Like, I can't really ask them these questions. Yeah. Just like your team. Yeah. It's clear that you do. Yeah. We have to follow the election bylaw. The election has to be within a. Uh, it's all set in the bylaw. The bylaw is the first Saturday immediately following the annual public meeting. Okay. Changing a bylaw is a several months long process. Oh, yeah. So <laughs> I didn't realize it's in the bylaw. Thank you very much, Heather. Okay. okay so, so I'm sorry, I... Heather, what's uh, or chair, what was the final decision on the date of the election? Well, Have there is no one? decision at this point. Would oh, okay. Like to a, a motion to confirm the dates of the annual public meeting and the election would be appreciated. So we were looking for the annual public meeting to be scheduled on Tuesday, June the sixth. And then uh, I don't know if we want to consider these separately or all together. And then the election of one commissioner is scheduled for Tuesday, June 13th, with an advance poll on Saturday, June 10th. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Next year, maybe we can have this on as a request for the same. Absolutely. Thank you. All right, so we have a motion, but nobody has made the motion. I move that our annual meeting be held on June the 6th, followed by an advance poll on June the 10th, and the election date to be set for June the 13th. Do you want to do that all in one motion as opposed to two? All in one? Sure. Thank you. Following the election bylaw. <clears throat> May I have a second to that motion? Right. Yeah, I'm second. Thank yeah. you, Randy. All those in favor? Aye. Thank you, Heather. Moving on to the financial report. Okay, thank you again, Madam Chair. Um, just following a prior example for the financial report this month, I may want to suggest that perhaps I could combine these in the future, but we'll, uh, we'll cross that bridge in the future. Combine what? the financial report and the activity report, because there's a fair bit of overlap. But, uh, so Scotiabank, the February bank statement was reconciled and you'll see the totals of the bank balance at the end of February and then the, um, the numbers until the end of March. So that gets us to our year end. 
Uh, later on in tonight's agenda is a request for decision to make the new clerk treasurer assigning authority for the organization. Uh, MODC payment, the final year end 2022-23 reconciliation payment arrived on March 20th from uh, the municipality. This included some information you may be pleased to hear is that the uh, improved 22-23 low income property tax relief program <clears throat> was subscribed by nine residents and two nonprofit organizations for a total of 3970 compared to a total of six residents for 1677.92 in the previous year. Please note that the revised program was in effect for half of the fiscal year. The Chester Volunteer Fire Department in that reconciliation was compensated for an additional $204 for fire boat usage. Uh, 2022-23 audit has been scheduled to begin on April 28th by the village's auditing firm, Morse Brewster Lake. Uh, audit, audit committee meetings therefore need to be scheduled for the weeks of April 24th and May 22nd to officially begin the process and receive the final report respectively. Uh, HST return later in tonight's agenda is a request for decision to register staff as directors <coughs> on the village's business number account. This uh, is required for us to submit the October 2022 20, to April 2023 um, HST return. There is a provincial HST offset program that should become available for application by villages in May. Um, we're just waiting to see that come through. And the only other item I had was just to note that I'm looking into registering the village to be able to accept donations and issue tax receipts. As I understand, there's some desire to be able to do that around any other kind of fundraising. So we need to register in the charitable or Correct. Yeah. And a number of other uh, municipalities and villages are registered as such, so it's not an unusual position to be. So the only follow on item here is really just around scheduling audit committee meetings. So if you'd like, I can just take direction to contact uh, those involved. I know all of you are, but there's a couple of other people and just collaborate. Can you explain that? I have to visit my first year on site. Um, does that mean we simply meet to give the auditor that's all we need to do. The audit. And that's Correct. it. That's all we need to win that line. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. There, it has to be handled that way. That's the requirement under the MGA. Okay. So, and then there has to be another meeting of the audit committee to receive the audit report. And then that committee refers it to the commission for final approval, which can happen at the annual public meeting if necessary. I believe it happened that way last year, but before is. Because also nice. Yeah, must happen. Who else is on the audit? There, the usually the the auditors attend auditors. that meeting, and you uh, there's a requirement for at least one member of the public. I believe you have seats for two, and one is vacant, so you do have one person. Sandy Merrick. Sandy Merrick. Okay. Yeah. Um. Are there any questions for Heather? So we have, I, I have some questions. Mm -hmm. uh, the Chester Volunteer Fire Department was compensated for the remaining fire boat usage fee of $204. I don't understand that. Was the CVFD given $204? Yes, it was the remainder of the taxes. Yeah. There was more tax collected on their behalf from the municipality than we had given them at that point. And this was just to, to close the gap. In the budget. Correct. Yeah. And then there is a request for decision on HST and um, donations. So we will discuss that at the time. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Okay, can I ask just one more question? Um, I, I feel like we didn't finish the discussion about the audit. Okay. Um, 
You say there has to be two members of the public present. There has to be one by by provincial requirement. There has to be one member of the public on the committee. It turns out that the commission normally has two. More is always better, but we currently have a vacancy in that seat. That's what puzzled me. A vacancy in what seat? The second member of the public. Which is not required. Point. It's only one that's required, but you you had two in the past. Okay. And so what you're going to do is call us together plus one human. Correct. And the auditor and the is supposed to be present. Yeah. Okay. Right now. So if you like, I can just take that away to schedule. You don't, need, you don't need, need a motion for that. <laughs> no. And we should probably set about looking for another volunteer. Good luck. I, I believe it's been posted before. Oh, I did post I did draft advertised. another one that I thought we might do, just give it one more try. Um, I could rope some of you. I mean, I can already write. Yeah. I mean, I've got about 4,000 relatives to be here. <laughs> Body. Well, so Randy, it's this has the text of the of the last ad. I'm just trying to make it a little eye catching. You said on our web. Page. It's not yet, but it, this is a this yeah, is an yeah. ad I could put on our Facebook oh, to oh, see if Facebook. we can attract some yeah. attention. It's exactly the same copy. It's just, just so later. Repeating it because it disappears. It does. It does that, Randy. Yeah, so my question basically said, is that this is a one shot committee? You will meet once a year, twice a year. Or, oh, okay. To receive the audit um, at the end. Oh, of the so to, yeah. to authorize the audit and to receive the audit. Correct. And then we present it at the end. Of the yeah, day. but basically the committee is a one trick pony, basically. Yeah, yeah okay. Yeah. I wasn't quite a, why would anybody want to be on such a thing? <laughs> And that, that, that was what kind of tricked me out. Mm -hmm. It's something like the citizen it's a form of internal control. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so wow. I understand why. And, and given that there usually is a fair bit of public interest in, in the budgeting process and, and that everything's kind of counted for, we, we, we have for. one citizen who is very interested in that. And as soon as we take that in the here. Wow. Yeah. Oh, from my earlier, um, I don't know if this is the right time. Um, I think it's impressive that we gave that much away on the low income property tax relief. And I think we should make sure people know about that. Mm -hmm. You know, it's pretty, I think it's a good- How, how do you suggest we do that? I don't know, it's something we should discuss later. Or I'll give it some thought. Okay. Thank you're, you, you're our right. social media human. <laughs> We can certainly, um, we were talking earlier uh, about potentially kind of re reinvigorating the meeting highlights um, right. that needs to be done, and that would be a good place. That'd be good, yeah. It can be posted on Facebook and on the website too if you want to. Mm -hmm. um, I have a question with regard to the finances. Yes. Um, Will we be receiving, apart from the preliminary audit, mm -hmm. will we be receiving a fourth quarter update um, for the, the village? We normally get that material the following month, so we're always working a little bit behind ourselves, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. But yes, as soon as we have that material that we can go through and reconcile. It's very important. Mm -hmm. It'll be certainly be done um, at least internally before the audit of the lives on the 28th. Um, <coughs> so this would be on a non-consolidated basis. Okay, thank you. Okay. <clears throat> um, part 9.1, grant application. Western Municipal Heritage Society. I'll try to find the end of this. Two pages. No, I think all those pictures. Oh, all the stuff, right? Yeah. Draft motion is that the village commission approves a 2023-24 village grant 
the Chester Municipal Heritage Society in the amount of to be determined from our celebrations and or tourism traction projects. Thank you very much, Geraldine. Second. We don't have a time. You don't think that's the biggest. Are you, are you seconding that? Oh, sure. Just Thank you. All table. those in favor, raise your hand. Carrie, now who would like to start the discussion? Well, clearly they've asked for more than our budget. So we can start. We have a total community celebration budget of 9500 Are they not asking also, sorry? Yes. Um, I'm assuming some of it's out of the tourism budget, right? Well, we've got tourism, so a fraction of 10, and the other one is 9,500, but we don't want to be getting all no. to one organization. Randy? The grants policy is 5,000 per applicant, is it? I can't okay. remember. Maximum. Is that the total? Maximum. Maximum in a year. For anyone who should happen to want a grant. Yeah, I thought that's how it was. But, right? but we have that. Budget. Oh no, no, I just I thought it was say these guys get five, some, um, somebody else comes up and wants their five. No. Five is the limit for the entire year for anyone. No. On the grants policy. Well, the total for the grant is 9,500, but the maximum that we can give any one group is 5,000. Yes, excuse me, that was my question. Could other groups apply, even if we gave these guys 5,000? Could another group apply and still get a grant, or is 5,000 the total budget for any type of grants? I've never been 100% oh, sure. The total about. Is 10. May I answer that? Sure. The budget for grants is $9,500. And once that is gone, it is gone. Oh, I see the way it's worded. I did. I did. Um, <laughs> no one total budget. The total budget for grants, grants, tourism, and no, celebration. No, grants only. Okay. Okay. All right. Um. And tourism attraction is another ten right, in a separate line. Like, and that yeah, has okay. yet to be determined, discussed, mm. and mm. moved on. The um no one not for profit organization can receive any more than five thousand dollars in a grant. The remaining forty five hundred dollars is divvied up amongst other NGOs who would apply. That was the question I was asking. Yes. So I believe it was pointed out that the Heritage Society is requesting fifteen thousand dollars. Is it? Mm -hmm. I would suggest that because we are not, as a commission, totally settled on the ten thousand tourism project grant, that we're not making a decision with regard to those funds at this point. Yes, Geraldine. I don't remember actually discussing the tourism attraction grant. I think it was briefly mentioned. So we have not put it on the table. We haven't actually put it into our policy. No. No. Okay. Um, in, in the wider context, uh, not just the heritage society. I would like to propose that we think about having a policy where we have deadlines for proposals mm -hmm. so that we can consider everyone's at once rather than, for instance, we don't know, we may not get any more, in which case it would be very fair to get the heritage society $5,000. But if we give them $5,000 now and then something comes in later that we think is fairly suitable, it makes it difficult. So, although we can't really do it now, I propose that for our continuing fiscal for next year, after we have our annual budget meeting, that we establish a policy that 
uh, I'm making this up. April 1st is the deadline for application for grants, or it could be June the 30th, or it could be September the 1st. But, but that we have one or two dates where people know that they get their application in, and then all applications can be considered at the same time. I think that's an excellent suggestion, Geraldine. Thank you. Um, and we should um, come up with a way to determine what is the appropriate date. If we were to say January 1st, many NPOs would say, oh, well, we can do this or we could do that, but they have no solid plans in place. And the grant may be given without proper due consideration to what their plans are and whether or not their plans will come to fruition. So that's a discussion for another day. What do you want to do? Where's Madam that? Chair? Yes. Uh, two points. Well, that's an excellent idea. And I think municipality uses the end of March was their deadline. Um, and you also have to remember that there's volunteers who may not be available in January to write these applications. Mm -hmm. And just to put it out there, the Art Center, the new chair of the Art Center, has in fact a grant. He's just started a month ago and he's trying to get all his ducks in a row and has now a grant application in hand. So he will be filing. So, yeah. so we don't want to give all of our money away. Mm -hmm. right away. But that, I, that's a great idea. I would, I would like to move. I would like to amend the movement on the table. Uh, we set this application aside for the time being while we consider overall policy. Do you have a second? I guess I see. I did the first one, so I'll, I'll second this one as well. Okay. We don't have to agree to it, but just put it on the table. Okay. So the motion is to defer a decision. On this, on the Heritage Society request for a grant until such time as we reconsider our grant policy. Moved by Geraldine, seconded by Randy. All those in favor? Aye. You're, you're, you're well, being I, a little scared. Well, I, I don't want us to take six months to No, yeah. no, no. <laughs> that no that I, that's my, yeah, uh, that's mine as well. Put it to the next meeting. Can we do that? I have made what? my amendment. But then we should also then we should put it out there. Like if you know yes, we, for this year we could say all grant applications have to be in by end of May. Yeah. May. May. Yeah. Just so, so it's we fair. Can, we can put it in page book and on the website. Yes, Randy. I think yeah, I think some of this stuff is wanted to be started the spring or early summer. And that was sort of along with what Laura said. That was going to be my question before we went ahead with the motion. Um, I seconded it as amended, but I don't want the time to slip. Does May, May 30th suit you or is that? Yeah, reasonable? that seems reasonable enough. Okay. Yeah, like next meeting or something like that. And that doesn't mean next year. No, we this could, year. We, that's <laughs> just this year. But no, no, I mean, we could do March or April next year, but for this year, we'll make that our own. Okay. For this year, May 20th, 2023, for this year. Maxine, we have totally covered you up on that one. Have you got us? Okay. Huh. Are you willing to go along with the date on that one as well as the second? So is that going to be part of the motion then? Yes. Yeah, I'll go along. May. Okay. May the third. Sorry. Yes. As the second arrival, that amendment sits well with me. Can anybody read back that motion? Yeah, interesting. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I can say it is in pitch. The original motion was the Village Commission approved the grant for the Chester Municipal Heritage in the amount of, I believe you said the 15000 didn't be discussed no. for the restoration of the train station. And then when you discussed it, to defer amendment, excuse me, moved amendment to defer the decision on the Heritage Society grant until... Reconsider 
the grant pol until you reconsider the grant policy. The May 30th, I was going to ask, is that when people have to put in the grants or is that the deadline for you guys? Why don't we just say, uh, uh, while we reconsider for, until May 30th, while we seek other applications to this year. Does that make sense to people? So Maxine has a good point. Are we going to just, so we're going to have our policy determined by May 30th. I don't so, know. I, I, I'm right now, what all I'm thinking about is we're, we're going to put off application for this year and seek the policy for, for this year, but perhaps we should do the policy at our next meeting as well. We absolutely have to do the policy at the next okay. meeting. Okay. There you go. Okay. Yes, Randy. And I, if, I don't think there should be any dollar value mentioned in the motion. I think we should be discussed. Yeah, well, she mentioned. It. It's well, because yeah, that's yeah. that's what was in the. Yeah, no, that was in that was the recommendation. Okay. The request. The request. Yeah. 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 All right, so this will be deferred uh, until our May meeting. What was policy? Yes. And in the interim. The the word will be out that the the grant policy of ninety five hundred dollars will will we be including the current contraction in the policy would, as well? I would suggest that that is a different project. But we would also benefit from um, the date and like application date. We haven't done the ten thousand dollar tourism attraction projects yet. But there is no policy for that. I would deal just with the celebrations policy and get it out there. That there is ninety five hundred dollars available, and get your request in by May thirtieth. My concern is because we've already raised it here, and I'm not doing this internal, but on the record, we've raised the fact that the tourism attraction project is a possibility. So I'm wondering if we should commit to establishing that policy at our next meeting. As well. I would take this at one bite at a time. Okay. We're a brand new team here, and I wouldn't chew bite off any more than we can chew. Then why did that come into this briefing? I believe it was because that may have been what the Heritage Society was thinking that they may be able to access. But given that that is a, a new project, and there may be, it's it's not a, intended, I don't believe, to be a granting project. Okay. It's not I, to be. I thought it was coming internally from us into the briefing. I didn't realize it was coming from an external source. Well, it's in our budget. Just that was my assumption of that may be what the Heritage Society was thinking they could access. But it given that that has not been a, a lot of thousand dollars the use of that money for tourism attraction projects hasn't been decided. It could be for Wi-Fi in the downtown. It could be signage. For <laughs> signage, it could be for collaboration with MODC. Uh, and what are we paying to sign on? Geraldine, I cannot answer that question tonight. Thank you. So we have the motion. Randy. May I suggest we withdraw the motion and reintroduce it as a something else is too is too kerfuddled. Yeah. I think we should be on record as saying that our intention is to get the word out that there is ninety five hundred dollars for NPOs. But this specific request this specific request is been has been deferred okay until but... we get the word out. Major. Oh no, I'm just thinking how is Maxine going to make anything out of the mess so, that we created for her? Unless let's have a motion. Her. Another would you like to rescind your previous motions? I would agree to that. Thank you both very much. Let me have a motion 
to defer the Chester Municipal Heritage Society request for a grant until May 30th, or actually our next meeting, which is going to be before May 30th. May 10th. May 10th, yeah. So the May 30th, but we're not going to decide on her grant by May 10th. No, we're not. Um, in the interim, get the word out. And there is no time sensitivity to the Heritage Society grant. Um, So I would say, can we motion? Mm. Gee, perfect. We have the APM to deal with in June. You did. Why don't we just move to defer this request to a later meeting or later time pending? Pending policy discussion. Yes. Could we say that uh, defer all grant applications to a May 30th deadline while we advertise on the website yes. and Facebook for additional uh, grant Interest. applications? Mm -hmm. Interest. Does that work for everybody? Yes. It's it addresses this particular right. one plus any that may come in at yeah. a later time. Can you make sense of that, Max? Mm -hmm. That last one was pretty sensible. Yeah. Who moved and seconded that? I moved. I moved. Oh, okay. Sure. Gerald, Gerald and Randy. All those in favor? Carry. Okay. Now we have CRA registered owners directors, HS. Yeah. Would you like to speak to that, <laughs> So we're requesting that uh, the village the village has to change the names of the registered owners on the uh, business number account with the CRA for the purpose of completing the village's tax HSD tax returns. This is a task that's carried out by staff. Village is required to complete an HSD tax return, which is basically a pretty simple return, uh, comparison of any HST collected by the village and HST paid out by the village with the difference going to CRA. The return is done online via the CRA's web portal, and the business number for HST collection account can only be accessed by individuals um, designated as owners, directors of the account. So a motion of the commission is needed. Uh, this plus a letter to the CRA has been prepared for the commission chair's signature. So under considerations, uh, this action is required to carry out the village's responsibility to file tax returns. So it's a key part of the financial stewardship of the organization. Yes. Who presently resides at, on there? As our you know uh, owner director, is there anybody's name? Apparently, it's, it's still Dennis. It's still Dennis. Who's on it right. now? It's, it was there is actually twice a year is when we're supposed to put in HST returns. Jeff didn't realize that, so we've missed one. So we're we're a bit behind the a bit behind our filing duties on that. Is there a penalty for that? Probably. Probably. Huh. Yeah, I won't know that for sure until we. Uh, have no, access right though. Mm -hmm. Who is? CRA. Yeah. <laughs> Question. Yes. Do you lose the HST rebate if you are late to filing? I don't know that. And the rebate program may only apply to, I don't know the period that it would cover until we get that information and that will be till May, unfortunately. I don't think we <clears throat> did get penalized because remember when Dennis first came, he had to go back and do it because it wasn't done previous because of changes. Yeah. They might they might impose a penalty, but I don't think they 
I've been late with HST, and it's never, if you're owed money, it's never a worry. No. Okay, so this is standard procedure. Yeah. And um, and Dennis was the director. The only one. Maxie, you, you were the as well. I wanted for doing payroll and stuff, but not doing it. Like you're you're going to be on it now. If we agree. I'm just wondering if this has any internal controls implications. Uh, does it, you're still able to file uh, CRA remittances. Oh yeah, because that's totally different to a degree. Yeah. I'm, this is <coughs> it's being registered with the CRA as an employer, but this is this is the business number, so it's a separate bit of accounting with uh, with the revenue agency. Mm -hmm. If I may, Nancy. Yes. It's also important to have someone because if if Heather goes to call because we've got an issue and they say, well, are you Dennis? What's your address and everything? And I know this from various farmers markets that I've been on and okay. it's a, it's can be a nightmare. So I am prepared to make this motion as it. Thank you, Laura. Six. Just as it's uh, the draft motion? Yeah. I'd second that, I'm sure. Thank yeah. you, Randy. All those in favor? Aye. Uh -huh. Good. I do have a question, and I suppose it's just um, some inputs. Heather and Maxine are neither owners nor directors. It's just, it's it's just the, of the business, yeah, yeah. of the business yeah. number, not the corporation. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. And I do, uh, I like the idea that it's both of us, so that if one of us gets hit by a bus, we can still access the account. Good plan. <laughs> try not to get hit by a bus. We'll try not to. Okay, so you will prepare all the necessary documents. Okay. Yeah, and I would provide it to sign them. We have signing authority 89.3. Signing authority for the new clerk treasurer. I'm going to ask some questions here with regards to the request for direction. Sure. Uh, the background. It is desirable to reinstate a corporate credit card for certain purchases and subscriptions where a check is not possible. In other words, you pay by credit card. Correct. I, the options uh, at at this point, I would like to add a fourth option that, and I don't know how you want to word this, but to approve the credit card, if, if um, the clerk treasurer is signing authority, but not, but only for the credit card. I think that uh, it's important that we separate the, the signing of checks and leaving that to the scrutiny of the commissioners rather than having uh, staff involved in signing checks. Yes, Darren. Um, in this day and age, I wonder if one even needs a credit card if you have appropriate electronic payment through your bank. I mean, I hardly ever use my credit card anymore. I just take everything electronically. All the subscriptions that, like even some of the subscriptions we have currently to Zoom, um, Adobe, uh, can many of those, they just take a credit card. There's oh, no other right. option. Yeah. How do we pay them now? Dennis is credit card. Using people's personal cards and repaying them. It automatically went through. Which is not, I had a, it's not a good idea. I think it's um, wiser to keep 
those yes, our bank separate. account set up appropriately so that you can electronically pay when it's appropriate as opposed to writing a check because mm -hmm. checks are expensive. You need to have special signing authorities to do that. Yeah. Well, she's talking. May I ask a question? Sure. The credit card issue. Mm -hmm. If our dear old departed Dennis, who was getting points by using it. I had the same thing when I had a partner who was racking up points by using his personal card, being reimbursed by the company. And he didn't understand the concept that these things were worth money. Mm -hmm. You know, that you just got like 8,000 points, which entitled you to go Australia on this this week and uh, what do i get as your partner in in return he didn't it took me actually bringing it up to realize that i don't think corporate credit cards so so my, yes. well no but he paid so by his personal card got oh, the right. points and then had us reimbursed mm -hmm. and to me there would have to be some kind of check any points or anything gotten by use of that credit card should approve to the commission of course not to the person card, no. who is spending the money. So I think this is, goes on quite a bit. Mm -hmm. Oh gosh, yes, I use my credit card for that $10,000 purchase and get oodles of points. Can we go back um, to the electronic payment thing? Why do we not have it? Well, for Adobe and Zoom and all that, you, you credit, credit card. Need a credit card. No, no, I mean, for instance, we're all paid with a check. I mean, that's pretty old fashioned. I had done all the research to set it up, but the process didn't get finished, didn't get asked for approval. It stopped. Are, are, are we all- So it can be done, but- Have Heather and Matt seen explore that? I mean, the amount of money that we save on checks in the year is enormous to start with. And B, it's bloody convenient compared to having to write hand write checks. Yes. Well, that is a, another discussion for another day. Yep. So right now we have three options. Do not approve signing authority or a corporate credit card. Well, that seems a little ridiculous. Well, that's that's one possibility. That's that's yes. Yeah. Uh, number two is approved clerk treasurer signing authority, but not a corporate credit card. But the object of this exercise is to have a corporate credit card, but not signing authority. So number, four. number three is approved clerk treasurer signing authority and the issuance of a corporate credit card. Well, if we have to approve clerk treasurer signing authority in order for the clerk treasurer for the village commission to have a credit card, that seems to be the only option. Is that true? That's correct. Yeah. You have to be assigned me on the bank account to get a credit card. Yeah. But I do not want, and I don't think the commission should authorize the clerk treasurer to sign to be the second signature on checks. If we have a credit card issued to the commission that has the chair as the signing officer? It's it's issued with a person's name, so it would be quite a lot of it, it, um, uh, management issue every time that there's a new chair. Um, it'd be a management issue every time there's a new CAO. No, hopefully there won't be a no, CAO. Theoretically, you know. Right. There could be a new chair annually. So, well, we need a credit card. So, how are we going to resolve this? We're going to say that two commissioners must sign the checks. And no credit card, obviously. No, no. We no. can approve the clerk treasurer signing authority and the issuance of a corporate credit card. You can't have the one without the other. Correct. But you don't want her to have signed. So. And it will be known that two commissioners must sign the checks. But if it, this is no disrespect to you, yeah, if you're worried about collusion, malfeasance, or mm -hmm. something, she still would have the legal right to sign the check because she's got the authority. 
Sure. Better not know. Sure. I know, but it's, it's, <laughs> yeah, I know, but just so you remember that. Yeah, because it's hers. Because if you're, if you don't want her to sign, which I know, because you're worried, just because we tell her, I mean, if you're going to cheat, you're going to cheat. You're not yes. really worried about whether or not you're allowed to. So, so the responsibility is on two signatures have to be on a check. Right. So should the clerk treasurer sign a check, the other signatory must be very vigilant that the purchase order and all the background information is legitimate just to preserve um, internal controls. However, if the clerk treasurer doesn't sign checks, we still have the responsibility as commissioners to verify that all is in order. And there are plenty of people out there who are a lot smarter than we are who can scam like you wouldn't believe. So is that understood? I have no idea where we are. We are option three. Option three. But the clerk treasurer never actually implements that option. Is that correct? But or the just, clerk she treasurer has does not them. have the authority oh, well, really. to sign checks. From the bank thinks she does, though. No, seriously, though. Uh, if you give her signing authority, she has to agree on the side never to use it, basically, is what you're saying. Yes. That's what you want. Yeah. So she can so, have a credit card. So she agrees, okay, I know I'm a signing authority, but I'm always going to get two of you guys to do the checks. Yes. That, I believe, is what Nancy wants. So I suppose there could come a situation where we would need her as a signatory, everybody who's out of town or something like that. But she would never do that except with permission or something of that. And given yes. that, even if I were to do that, there has to be a member of the commission. So it's not no, like it could happen with two signatures. Yeah, oh, no, I understand. It's and not like it could happen with three. Three. Yeah. But three. But our checks aren't credit for that. So, so the idea is basically that we give her no, the bank lets her, we, we tell the bank she's going to have signing authority, but she agrees never to use it to sign a check. Just in order to get the credit. Yes, exactly. But there's the secondary agreement by the clerk treasurer never to use that authority. Yes. That's uh, sort of what you we want. We could yeah. perhaps at the time of Heather's, what do you call that? Probation. Review her probation. Oh, yeah. probation. We could consider we consider that. Perhaps. Um, and we could also get the opinion of the auditor. Yes, mm -hmm. very good idea. And the bank manager. So. I suspect that, I mean, the signing authority is, it's a bank form, and she has to sign it. And to the get the credit card. Yeah. Clearly, uh, there has to be two signatures on the check, so you could never sign the check by yourself anyway. This is not likely to happen until after the annual, after the election. My understanding is that we all have to troop down to the bank uh, to after the election it. to get registered, re registered. Oh, yeah, re -register. Re -register. yeah. And that seems to be the appropriate time for Heather to sign. No. We would we would actually prefer to get it sooner because we've already got a couple of subscriptions on Jeff's card that we'd like to get off. Is you <laughs> just adding you as a signatory mean that we all have to troop down? No. 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 Um, Heather Freilich, the uh, bank manager, can prepare the paperwork. All right. Another uh, separate that we see All right. It. So has this been moved and seconded? No, I don't think we've got that far. <laughs> First of all, this one needed a fair amount of discussion. I know that the village commission approved the addition of the clerk treasurer, Helen McCollum, as a signing authority on the village of Chester Scotia Bank accounts and approves the issuance of the Scotia Bank corporate credit card for the organization. Seconder? Randy. Thank you, Randy. 
All those in favor? Gary. I do have, oh, I'm sorry. Can I ask yeah, one sure. more thing? The question I have is these things don't carry points approval, this type of credit card? Actually, I actually have no idea. Yeah. I, most, most I don't believe yeah. so. Yeah, okay. I, again, I'm a little leery about this whole mm -hmm. point collecting scene having been burned sure. before. Yeah. So we should find out if there are any points, is there a secondary? Usually reason? you can get the most basic card because you pay more for those. Yeah, point yeah. Very this is a pretty basic one. Yeah, we're we're at. Okay, that's fine. <laughs> so okay, that's fine. Okay, can we yes. also put a motion on the table to um, uh, have a discussion at our next meeting about going forward with the electronic banking? If you want to do that, you go ahead. I would like to move that we consider our next meeting, um, including electronic banking as part of our process to move into the modern age. After discussion with the audit auditors. After discussion with the auditors. I know my bookkeeper likes checks, hates e-transfers, hates um, them, hates them. I do them a lot. They're a ton of work and for pur purposes of tracking so and everything. Well, I don't I don't know what our authors would say, okay. but for what trackability. Let, then let's say after discussion and with the auditor. Of the audit. Okay. Here we are, 9.4 proposed revisions to documents. We didn't actually vote on that, did we? No, yeah. we didn't. No, that motion that you made is still who's, on the table. Who seconded? No one did. No one did. Oh, for the. Yeah. Are you making that motion? I made the motion, but there's no second. Secretary. This was to bring e, e banking well, to onto this. it. Yeah. Well, it's it hard to bring it to the to look into it. Who's seconding? I'll second. Thank you, Laura. All those in favor? Aye. Carried. Nine point four. <laughs> Uh, I'll be very brief with this. Uh, the only reason this is on here, um, so the the agenda as you see this time, um, Nancy kindly reviewed my suggestions and and approved the change in format. The rationale behind this is largely driven by accessible document standards. Um, so the left justification. It's, it's fairly minor in what you're looking at in terms of the formatting, um, but it's driven by those accessible document standards and best practices and minute taking. So what's the difference? It looks very much the same as it always did. Can you point out to me where the differences are? <laughs> it's really just in formatting that uh, everything is left justified. So you see, oh, the, see. the minutes are everything's pushed over uh, okay so it's and, all and we don't use underlining we don't use um it's it's more about bold and yeah okay yeah yeah, it's pretty yeah. yeah it's pretty it's simple. Simple. Yeah. just housekeeping so just wanted to make sure everyone was in the loop. i have some questions mm -hmm. uh, what is the purpose of having attachments Oh, yes, I'm sorry, I didn't talk about that. So minutes minutes are meant to provide a summary of the decisions made. They are not meant to be a verbatim account of what everyone said and did during the meeting. Um, verbatim minutes are very vulnerable to error and confusion. We saw an example of that with, uh, with the previous minutes around the, the cell phone issue. So what... Uh, Per the example attached, the detail will be included in the attachment rather than rewriting the entire report. For example, um, where you saw the clerk treasurer's report last time, the whole report was basically reproduced in the minutes. Whereas with this, it just has decisions and refers to, to an attachment so that you can go back and look at them. That's so it's meant to be it's yeah. meant to be just a record of the decisions full stop. So you're talking about say the, the minute I'm sorry, I didn't ask you. Go ahead. <laughs> the uh, minutes are 
now going to be mere one-liner bullet pointed things. Correct. Which yes, means that we will have to go to the yes. YouTube video yeah. to find out what the heck went on. Well, I, I gather there will be attachments generated exactly. yeah. with the verbatim or whatever is there. If, if for example, um, like last time, Jeff's, in, Jeff's clerk treasurer report, for example, everything he said in his report was reproduced in the minutes versus just saying that he presented his report and it's attached. Oh, so okay. it's, well, just I simple, it's just simple. It's just attached in that up. paper, attached yeah. or attached electronically. So, so yeah. in the, yeah, the minutes, no, electronically, yeah. but in paper too, if you want to print them out. But people don't. So basically it. you're going to, the, the minutes now are going to be simply, it was motioned and seconded and decided that this would happen. Correct. And somewhere in this pile of paper, there's an attachment that will tell you exactly what we've discussed in order to reach that conclusion. It, it's, it's not considered uh, particularly safe to be trying to do verbatim minutes because we, the, the risk of uh, misunderstanding, yeah, mistranslation, okay. yeah. and so on. So, yeah, I mean, and something quite, rubs me about that, but yeah, well, I just quite can't often say what the, it is. The attached persons, our discussions today, we had attached, right? So when the minutes for this meeting are done, you almost don't need to do the attachments because we already have them. The, we oh, have, yes. So so some, of, some of the items that are in yeah. the agenda package will also be in the minutes oh. package. That's so you don't need so you don't have to go back and forth. Yeah. Yeah, I'm sort of sort of uh, figuring out it, but I'm still thinking there are places I'd like to see the whole. Verbatim, not have to paw through a bunch of secondary documents in order to see why it's in the minutes. Who's going to remember a month later what was said? That's why we have a recording. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah well, who wants to listen to the recording? Go the recording? The meeting oh, I've actually found them really quite a lot. Oh, I'm, 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 yeah, no, I'm sure, it, but, but I'm not that way. Yes. I, I don't see things that way. Oh, well, let me look at four different sources to find out what I want. Well, so why you rather have your minutes recorded for me? More or less what we do now seems to, or did yeah. I mean, I have no it's, serious objection. I'm simply. Sorry. No, go ahead. I would suggest that we try this. And if there isn't enough information, for our purposes in the minutes that we tweak it. Thank you. Um, was there a, there's no motion attached to that. No. Is there? No. All right. Thus end of the regular session for the time being at eight, whatever. They have 18. a motion. In camera, please. Thank you, Randy. Second. Second. Thank you, Laura. All those in favor? All right. So we moved in camera at eight, 18, did you say, Laura? Yes. Thank you. Sweet.